Hello, giving honor to the Almighty God, Mr. Lord Spate, all my father's children. I thank the Lord for another day. I thank him for who he is in my life, and I thank him for just everything that he's been doing in my life. And, uh, you know, I was just thinking about uh, some things, and uh, and I was thinking about uh, just how, what do we do with our spiritual food that we get? Uh, I was driving by um, Golden Corral, and a thought came to my mind, um, and I was just saying, you know, Lord, we we go to buffets and uh, we eat, but you know how people that are anorexic, they eat a lot, then they binge and they purge, and they still, you know, they never gain any weight. And and I thought about that, and so I thought about First Corinthians, the tenth chapter. The verse 1 through 5, and I'm going to read that. It says, But for I do not want you to be ignorant, brothers, that our fathers that were all under the clouds and all went through the sea and were all baptized into Moses in the clouds and in the sea. And they all ate the same spiritual food. They all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from that spiritual rock that followed them. The rock was Christ. But God was not pleased with them, the majority of them, for they were struck down in the desert. And we know the word of the Lord has already been blessed. And I want to talk for just a little few minutes about overeating, but still spiritually anorexic. You know, we can be in church for years and years and years and still be babes in Christ. When we think about it, when we go to a buffet, you know, the sky's the limit. We got anything that we could have, all kind of meat, desserts, salads, and we eat our heart content. We pay one price, and sometimes when you go in there, you see people, and you look at them, and you're like, Lord, they must have a tapeworm, because it seems like they never get full. And that came to my mind, how we are in God's Word. A lot of us go to church for years and years, but we still wind up being babes in Christ. We overeat and we overeat. We we hear God's word, but we don't apply it to our lives. We go to church Sunday, hear a good message, but so many times that message that we hear it stays in the four church walls. We don't take it out and apply it to our lives. You know, we're supposed to enter into church to worship and depart to serve. But so many times we keep eating the same spiritual food. But yet we're like the children of Israel. Ate from the same food, drank the same drinks. Over 2 million people, but yet all of them that were over 20 years old never came out of the wilderness. And, I, and it's really strange because you can have children raised the same way, have the same parents, and still the same values. Same mom, same dad, same DNA, same bloodline. And you'll have some children that'll be in the church every time the doors open. And then the same bloodline. They don't even want to step foot in the church. Why is that? When we're hearing God's word, but we're not applying it to our life. See, the fact of the matter is, God ain't concerned about what you hear. He's concerned about what you obey. Because you can go to church over and over again. You can go down under the water, be baptized, and still come up a wet devil. Why are we eating the same spiritual food, the same drink? But you got some people 
that are so zealous and on fire for the Lord to do all they can to please the Lord and to help brothers and sisters and to live the best Christian life that they can live. But that you got other ones that come to church day in and day out, have the best suits, finest clothes, put, put big offerings in church, but raise more hell than a little bit. The same thing with the children of Israel. We go to church to get our spiritual food. And we keep giving it, and we keep getting it, and we keep getting it. We're overeating the spiritual food. But the problem is, is that we're not digesting it. I mean digesting it so it can be productive. We're not digesting the food so that we can go out and tell others about the good news of the gospel. Brothers and sisters, overeating, but still spiritually anorexic. That's how so many of us today, why there are so many churches, you got a spoonful of people here, a spoonful of people there, get upset, go from church to church. But see, what people need to understand, there's going to be some problems everywhere you go. And you need to learn that. It doesn't matter about the church because if you go there to praise God, you know what? The Lord died for their imperfections. And I would never, ever let anybody run me from a church because I don't go to church for a person. I go for the Almighty God. I go to thank Him for what He is in my life, how He saved me from a burning hell, how His mercies is new each and every day. Because, see, let me tell you something. Here's the problem with people that go to church and always find fault and go from church to church. The problem is, is they're looking for a perfect church. Well, let me tell you something. There are no perfect churches. If there was perfect people, then Jesus wouldn't have had to die on the cross. I think that's what so many of us fail to realize, that we're work in progress, that our Christian walk, you know, it's in different stages. Some people get it, some people don't. But God, look at your effort. Because if you're going to church each and every day, but you're not loving your brother, you're not trying to do better, and someone not seeing Christ in you, well then, we need to reevaluate our Christian life. We need to reevaluate. Because... The Bible that I read and the God that I serve, you're going to feel something. He's going to make you feel something in your spirit. And even when people do you wrong, he's going to have you to pray for them, not try to get revenge. And I understand 100% there are people that are not so lovable. But you know what? The Bible says that while we was yet sinners, Christ died for us. You know what? And we so quick to point a finger about that crack addict, that drug addict, that alcoholic. And we may not have ever did those things. But how many of us talk about what we almost did? Oh, I almost slept with this person. Oh, I almost tried crack. Let me tell you something. The only reason that you didn't do it was because of the grace of God and that power. See, God orders your steps. And that's why he gave you the Holy Spirit. And we say, how can people do things? You know what? Let me tell you something. If Christ don't live in you, then people don't have a conscience. You say, why do bad things happen to good people because people have the ability to rationalize. And when God gave free will, they can choose to worship him in spirit and in truth. But I'm just trying to tell you, these are the last days. And we got to stop overeating 
but being spiritually anorexic. That we're still starving to death spiritually because we're not growing in the knowledge of Christ. Let us learn to lift each other up, not to tear down. That's when you start to get overweight. But you get overweight in the goodness of the Lord. Everybody in the world ain't going to be a size two. But let me tell you something. When you fat on God's word and fat on his spirituality, uh, you got it going on. You can be a holy diva in the admonition of the Lord. Because your king's daughters and your sons of the most high. And you can hold your head up. Because, see, it don't matter what people call you. It's what you answer to. But we got to learn, brothers and sisters, that we have a job to do. The Bible says the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. And we got to get on the battlefield. And that's why I've been trying my best to promote this ministry so that I can go farther and farther and expand because God gave me a charge and I've got to do what thus says the Lord. This is what he gave me and God is going to give me provision to do this. I urge every single one of you to look at the fundraiser page. Support if you can. God bless you. I think if even looking, hey, everybody ain't got it. It's not about money. It's just about provision to be able to go out and spread the gospel. Because I know that my reward is in heaven. And let me tell you something. Preaching ain't popular. But also favor ain't fair. God choose you. He chooses who he want. He picks up the least, the less, and the loss. From the uttermost to the guttermost, God can use you. We need to start getting filled up on God's word. And like I said, hey, I know a work in progress. And let me tell you something. You don't have to wait until you're perfect. Well, I got some things that I I, I know that I it's some things that I do and I, and I don't want to be a hypocrite. Let me tell you something. God ain't looking for perfect people. He's looking for willing people. And so let's not let that be an excuse. Take baby steps. Just obey the word of God and get in somebody's church. And get some spiritual food. But use that food to help somebody else. We got to be a food pantry. We're overeating. And we're glutton. Because we want everything. But we're not sharing what we got. And because of that we're spiritually anorexic. We're spiritually bankrupt. Too many of us Christians, we have a zero bank account spirituality because we never fill it up. We're always taken out, tearing down. But let me tell you something. I'm just a sinner saved by God's grace. I'm nobody, but I'm somebody in Christ. I'm God's messenger with a message. And I thank each and every one of you. But I thought about that. Next time you go to Golden Corral or one of them buffets or whatever, just think about it. Overeating, but being spiritually bankrupt. That's 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 1st through the 5th verse. And I always give you scripture because by no means do I want you to think because I don't have a word to give. Everything I do is by the living word of God. And I don't want you to take my word for granted. 
I want you to get your Bible and read it for yourself. And let us go and start to share the bounty. God has set a table before us for us to enjoy. But we'll don't have to wait until we get to that great feast. But let's take what we learn and apply it to our life, to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And lift up the ones that are struggling. Hey, maybe they have not arrived. But let me tell you something. I've talked to all kinds of people. I've talked to atheists. You know what? It doesn't matter. I cannot be swayed. I know who I am in Christ. And I'm just like Peter the Rock. Because I know who I am in Christ. And I strive to make a difference. And I just want to be for real. I want to be simple. That, because we all start as babes in Christ. And I want to keep my messages as simple that preschoolers can understand it. Because we started as babes in Christ. You know, Paul said in his word, he said, I'd love to give you meat. He said, but unfortunately, you're still on milk. A lot of us been in church a long time and we're still on milk. And we ought to be on meat by now. But you know what? It comes in time from reading the word of God each and every day. Let's get full on the word of God and then let's just share it. Because these are the last days, brothers and sisters, and we have to be about our father's business. And, you know, every sermon ain't going to be jumping benches and everything. But you know what? I just get on fire for the Lord. And I, and, and that just I'm, that's what I am. I, I, that's how I do it. That's how I praise. But you know what? But I want people to understand because. Even if you don't, if you just say Jesus loves you, because we're all ministers. And being a minister is not measured by how much you can hoop and holler. But how much you can put a word in somebody and lift somebody up and meet people where they are. Pray for the sick, the bereaved, the ones that are hurting, the ones that don't seem to have nowhere to turn. Because remember when, when you're, and that's a very, very important point I want to leave. Remember when, when you're talking to someone that's struggling with a drug addiction or alcoholic, remember when you used to drink, when you used to get high. Because I'm going to tell you something, I'm going to be honest with you. Back in the day, I probably could teach y'all how to drink. But you know what? God changed me. But it wasn't overnight. That's why I don't put people down. But we have to address sin and we have to tell them and lift them up in love. I told a young brother, I was like, you know what? Let's be mindful. Social media, it's, it's okay if you want to spread the word. But I, I just told him, I said, you know what? You're spending so much time on social media. Uh, you need to be getting in God's word because if you're a leader, you know, you got to study. If you're going to try to lead people, sometimes you got to put that book down. You know, and, it, and then, you know, they get on know where you been? You know what? I've been focusing on the Lord. I got to talk to the Lord. I got to go and consult. Because I want to know what I'm talking about. And you know what? When he gave me a charge, you know, we're in charge of souls. And I want to tell people the right thing. And I can't tell people the right thing if I don't study myself. So I want people to be mindful of that. But I just wanted just to talk for a little bit about overeating, but still spiritually anorexic. Minister Laura Spate. I thank God for each and every one of you. I thank Pastor DePuri. I thank Sister Annette. I thank all of my brothers and sisters in Christ, the ones I know locally, 
the ones that I have met, and I am a very, very no-nonsense person, and I don't accept foolishness or negativity because it's about God. I got to keep God's ministry holy. And the ones that are listening are on my page, you'll know because if you disrespect God's word, you'll know it because guess what? You're not on my page no more. You're blocked. Because you don't have to respect me. I, I would pray that you will, but you will respect God's word. And if you and I'm going to tell you something. You send me a, a friend request, I give people a shot of a doubt. And, and like I said, I'm really, really starting, to, and I go through your profile. But I'm going to be honest with you. If you want to send me a friend request, don't send me no picture of no naked people. You know what? That is so disrespectful. You know what you do, but please respect and keep ministry holy. I give reverence to God and I respect everyone. Please just respect each and every person. When all of the ministries on here, please when you when you please don't send disrespectful stuff to their page. That is so disrespectful. I just had to put that out there because, you know, hey, I ain't gonna say you don't know no better, but it just need to be said. But I thank God. I ask each and every one of you, I thank you. I ask you to keep the family in prayer as we get ready to bury my niece, um, our niece, um, praying for the Spate Harris family. And God is so good. But to God be the glory. I am who I am by God's grace, Minister Laura Spate, Twin Ministry, Twin Gospel and Children Ministry of India, and all of my father's children, I thank you. Feel free to browse the fundraiser page for education and expansion. I'm going to have some conferences coming up in the future, and I will talk about them at a later time. But to God be the glory, be safe. It's rough out there. I said there's a corona devil running loose. Check that video out if you haven't. But God is so good. He's worthy to be praised. Minister Laura Spate, may the peace of Jesus be with each and every one of you. God bless you.